door you ever knocked down was the door to John Cena's bedroom. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on those notifications. And once you're done, leave a comment down below and I just might end up responding. Wow, Ronda Rousey has successfully made herself one of the most controversial figures in professional wrestling within about a month. And all it took was a social media frenzy and her reminding us that professional wrestling isn't real. Oh, we'll get to that. Wait, no, no, that's not mine. Uh... God damn! There we go. Ronda may have entered as the ultimate professional, but holy shit, that has not held up. Now, I'm D Wicked, and these are 10 things WWE would love hidden about the rowdy one. Number 10, professional wrestling is fake. Well, we've referenced it already, so why not just cut to the chase? So tonight when you were um, giving your promo, and it wasn't a promo. They gave me other things to say, I didn't fucking say it. On March 8th, Ronda released a video on her YouTube channel where she went off on an extensive rant on the WWE, the business, and especially the fans. Fuck them. Everybody, WWE Universe included. I meant that I'm going to disrespect the sport that they all love so much. Ronda was heavily booed out at Survivor Series 2018 when she fought off Charlotte Flair instead of Becky Lynch, and she wasn't very happy about it. Not only was her pissed off at the crowd reaction not supposed to happen, but there's still debate on the whole fiasco. I mean, in hindsight, with the heel turn, it might have all been a storyline, it probably was in all honesty, but that doesn't make any difference. This is still a wrestler actively kicking kayfabe in the nutsack, and I ain't about it. Oh, don't break kayfabe, Ronda. Wrestling's it's scripted. It's made up. It's not real. None of those bitches can fucking touch me. The end. Number nine, those rumors about her leaving. So, there have been rumors going around for a while that um, after WrestleMania, I am done with the WWE. They've been running rampant for weeks now, and while yes, Ronda did let out a personal statement about these rumors and the state of her family, Ronda did let out a personal statement about all the rumors about her leaving to start a family by basically telling people to fuck out of her personal business. Just my brass and my ass. As for me leaving the WWE, well... Stay out of my sax life. She also let out a statement telling the same people to fuck off since the actual business is fake, so I really don't know how to look at her social media presence anymore. Fuck em. One way or another though, there's a lot of talk that she'll be leaving after WrestleMania 35 for one reason or another. And that's always going to be shitty press to have on a wrestler who's in the main event of the biggest show of the year. Rousey is about to take it all! Psych! Oh my God. Shoulders down! Shoulders down! With Ronda being on such a higher level of fame than most of the entire roster, and her obviously not having walked out of Mania with the titles, I mean, it kind of adds up. What else does she have? You know, I've been to the top of the WWE, I've been to the top of the UFC, I've been to the pinnacle of sport at the Olympics. Number eight, her temper. Her, get her under control! Oh no! Oh, oh no! Rousey is assaulting the general man! What is she thinking? Now that she's a vicious heel, it's not as bad for WWE that the fans might know she's got a bad temper. In a way, it even plays to her strengths on screen now. However, traits on screen and off screen shouldn't always go hand in hand. Back during her UFC days, her temper constantly got the better of her in numerous situations, learning to her sh leading to her showing off her true disrespectful colors. I mean, for fuck's sake, the woman was so upset at losing to Holly Holm that she quit fighting for an entire God damn year. I was like down in the corner. I was, what am I anymore if I'm not this? And I was literally sitting there and like thinking about killing myself in that exact second. I'm like, I'm nothing. Oh, and speaking of, number seven, her loss to Holly Holm. Ronda Rousey is portrayed as the ultimate badass fighter, someone who seems somewhat impossible to conquer, which is why I'm kind of surprised she took the pinfall at Mania. Struggling to post and put the weight needed on her reverse pin. Left leg. Oh my God. Shoulders down. Shoulders down. Despite being overall very dominating throughout her run with Ultimate Fighting Championship, her surprise loss to Holly Holm not only caught most of the world off guard, but also kickstarted countless debates. Is the cocky Ronda Rousey really all she talks up to be? Is she getting stale? Has it been a fluke and can she somehow come back from this? Holly Holm is the new UFC 
And yeah, as we mentioned, her reaction to the loss was a complete joke too. Imagine if Brock Lesnar took a year off WWE after Roman beat him at SummerSlam before he stepped back into the ring. Because that's essentially what happened here. Brock Lesnar's a guy who's gone back and forth. Could you foresee something in the future saying, oh, three, four years down the road, if there's a fight that makes sense, if you still have that itch, do you think you could ever go back and fight in the UFC? Number six, her debut match somehow stole WrestleMania. Hey, Alex, better enjoy the moment because it's about to become reality. This isn't really a knock on Ronda Rousey as much as it is just a strange statement to how WWE books things that on a card that also featured AJ Styles versus Shinsuke goddamn Nakamura, the best match was the one that included a rookie, a pair of 49 year olds, and Stephanie McMahon. That's just, it's, it's just fucking weird. And here come the strikes from the baddest woman on the planet, Rousey, with rights and lows, over the midsection drop, Stephanie. Number five, she's really bad on the mic. If you can't dream big, ridiculous dreams, what's the use of dreaming at all? For a newcomer, Rhonda has actually been consistently great inside of the ring. You can tell she's a real professional and takes her athleticism seriously. Her promos, on the other hand, well, being a heel has helped her a little bit more with the realism department, but man, were her promos just fucking terrible for like an entire year. You, me, and everyone else here knows that I can re-break your face faster than you can say Nia Jax. I'm sorry, I've never liked the, hey guys, I'm here and I sure am happy about it promos to begin with, so pairing that with her abysmal acting skills really didn't do much for me. She can get kind of intense, but when she does this, her face goes all like this, and I, I just get upset again. The only door you ever knocked down was the door to John Cena's bedroom. Number four, she took years to get here. Well, WWE knew they weren't going to get Ronda fresh off the heels of Mania 31 when she cameoed alongside The Rock. They were definitely hoping that once she took the aforementioned break for a year that she'd consider stepping over into the professional wrestling realm. There were talks for months, not only rumors, but also WWE reps contacting Ronda to try and work something out. Unfortunately for them, Ronda wouldn't agree to sign a contract for almost three years. And while she did eventually get the full comeuppance on Steph, it took a lot longer than WWE would have ever hoped. Oh no! Not again! Rousey! Yeah. Number three, she kind of fucked over the first Women's Royal Rumble. The rumors are true! Ronda Rousey is here! Women have been a hot topic lately, especially in the last few years of the WWE for the whole divas evolution that slowly turned into the women's evolution which hit a new peak when three women main evented the biggest show of the year. So last year when the women were finally given a shot at the Royal Rumble match it seems kind of dumb to overshadow Asuka's incredible first ever women's rumble win by having Ronda debut literally just minutes afterwards. All that attention that Asuka deserved instead directed straight to Ronda. We're, we're, we are sitting here with the boss. We're sitting here with Stephanie McMahon. And Stephanie has no idea what Ronda Rousey is doing. Plus, number two, her debut made no fucking sense. After Asuka won the Rumble, the respective women's champions Charlotte Flair of SmackDown and Alexa Bliss of Raw came out to let the Empress pick her opponent of tomorrow. Before, of course, being interrupted by the Freaks and Geeks theme song and a happy go rowdy Ronda. Maybe I'm the only one who doesn't get this shit, but let's just play Connect the Dots real quick, okay? Ronda debuts in the ring to interrupt Charlotte Flair, Alexa Bliss, and Asuka. So it's only natural that come WrestleMania, she competed with Triple H, Kurt Angle, and Stephanie McMahon? Plus, Asuka is the only one who even teased the match with Ronda in this segment, despite being the only one who 100% definitely wasn't going to fight her at Mania. Corey, Ronda Rousey marched down here and got the face of Charlotte, Alexa Bliss, and Asuka, arguably the three most powerful women in WWE today. And number one, the whole husband situation. I, I honestly can't believe that Travis Brown even fucking popped up on Monday Night Raw giving this whole story. That is uh, Ronda's husband, Travis Brown, at ringside. 
Meanwhile, security. Oh! There's no need for security to get involved. Let's just cut straight to it. Ronda was outed for cheating on her boyfriend uh, before Travis Brown. After suspicions arose whether or not she was physically abusive of him, Ronda's new flame was confirmed to be Travis Brown, who he had also been cheating and physically abusing his wife, the second wife he's divorced so far, the second wife he's had domestic disputes surrounding. Jesus Christ, that is a mess. And those are 10 secrets WWE wants hidden about Ronda Rousey. How obvious is it that I'm sick? Let us know in the comments down below. After liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and notifications on that bell.